I've heard a whole lot of people in here talking tonight about this group and that group and domestic violence and blacks, these minorities and that minority. What I want to know is, when are you all going to start standing up for the majority? And here's who the majority is. I'm the majority. I'm a law-abiding citizen who's never shot anybody, never committed a serious crime, never committed a felony. I've never done anything like that. But it seems like every time we have one of these shootings, nobody wants to blame, put the blame where it goes, which is at the shooter's feet. You want to put it at my feet. You want to turn around and restrict my right, constitutional right that's spelled out in black and white. You want to restrict my right to buy a firearm and protect myself from some of the very people you're talking about in here tonight. It's ridiculous. I don't think Rod Serling could come up with a better script. It does not make any sense. The law-abiding citizens of this community and many communities around this country, we're the first ones taxed and the last ones considered and the first ones punished when things like this happens because our rights are the ones that are being taken away. That's the reason why I came down here today, gun show or no gun show, NRA or no NRA. I'm here to stand up for the law-abiding citizens of this community. Because I'm going to tell you that what's going to happen. You can take the guns away from us all you want to. You all write a law, I follow the law, I'll bring my guns down here, I'll turn them in. But here's what's going to happen. The Crips and the Bloods on the other side of town, they're not going to turn their guns in. They're going to hold on to them. And what's going to happen when you have to send the police down there to go take them? The police can barely enforce the law as it is. It's what I see. We demonize the police, criminalize and, and, and vilify the police, and we make the criminals into victims. And we're talking about restricting guns? How are you going to do that? How are you going to do that when the police department's already hamstrung? You're not going to be able to go down here and take these guns from these criminals. So the criminals are going to hold on to their guns. They're still going to have them. They're still going to break in my house, and they're still going to shoot me with them. And guess who's going to be the one that suffers? It's going to be me. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight, it is not going to happen without a fight. And when I say fight, I don't mean shots fired. I don't mean fist thrown. I mean I'm going to come down here to this city council and raise hell just like these loonies from the left do until you listen to the majority of the people in this city. And I am the majority. The majority of the people in this city are law-abiding, and they follow the law and they want their constitutional right to be able to bear, to bear arms. They want to be able to gun go to the gun show and buy a hunting rifle or a sport, a sport rifle. There are no military-grade weapons sold, sold, uh, sold at the uh, gun show. An AR-15 is not a military-grade weapon. Anybody that would go into combat with an AR-15 is a fool. It's a semi-automatic 22 rifle. You'd be killed in 15 minutes in combat with that thing. So we need to dispel all these myths and we need to drop all this, all this division that we got going on here. Because the bottom line is, when that Second Amendment was written, whether the framers liked it or not, they wrote it for everybody. And I am everybody. And the law abiding citizens of this city are everybody. And we want our rights, and we want to keep our rights. And by God, we're going to keep them, come hell or high water.